Hey, welcome to Microengineering. My name is Michael Rona, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to calibrate your magnetometer sensors because you know, you need to do that all the time, right? <laughs> um, so right now I am developing a quadcopter flight controller completely from scratch. And a magnetometer is, is very important for the flight controller and any errors I have in my magnetometer readings are gonna cause my drone to crash. <laughs> so it's gonna be really important to calibrate my magnetometer very well. And so I came up with a good procedure to do that and I'm gonna share it with you guys. But first I'm gonna talk about what magnetometers are and the different error sources we're gonna calibrate for. I'm gonna just quickly discuss how you can mitigate some of those errors and then finally go over the calibration model and procedure. So magnetometers are basically 3D compasses. Uh, magnetometer sensors consist of three magnetic flux sensors um, arranged 90 degrees to each other, you know, in the X, Y, and Z directions. And, they, and when they're arranged like that, we can measure the local magnetic field vector, in particular, Earth's magnetic field vector. And since we know Earth's magnetic field points north, we can figure out which direction is north, and therefore our magnetic heading, our, our compass heading. And you're going to find magnetometers in drones, uh, both fixed wing and quadcopters, um, airplanes, Tesla autonomous cars, um, satellites, you know, basically anything that needs to know which direction it's pointing. Um, unfortunately, magnetometers are pretty subject to errors. <laughs> And since magnetometers are such important sensors, if they have any errors in their measurements, it's gonna cause a crash probably. And if you fly quadcopters, you're probably very familiar with um, encountering compass calibration errors or compass errors, and maybe even familiar with how they can cause crashes. <laughs> um, and so proper calibration is gonna help prevent crashes and give your um, flight controller good compass data. So if you look up anything relating to magnetometer calibration, you're probably going to see a plot like this right here. Now I'm going to show you how that, how those plots are generated. So let's, so if you take your magnetometer sensor, this is my sensor right here. If you take your magnetometer sensor, keep it level and record data while rotating it around in a circle, ideally you would get a plot that looks like this green circle right here. Um, and the radius of this circle would be Earth's magnetic field strength, uh, wherever you are. But unfortunately, you know, your sensor's not gonna be ideal. You're gonna have all sorts of errors in it. And your sensor measurements are gonna actually look something like this, with the, um, with the ellipse sort of off-centered from the origin and kind of squished and rotated. And um, I'm gonna talk about what sort of errors cause those uh, distortions. So the most significant error that you need to account for in magnetometer measurements are hard iron distortions, um, also referred to as hard iron biases. And hard iron distortions come from permanent magnetic fields and will cause offsets in your measurements. And so hard iron distortions cause your measurements to be shifted off from the origin and kind of bring, bring that ellipse up somewhere out, out off the origin. And these hard iron distortions are gonna be the largest in magnitude and definitely the most important to calibrate for. And these hard iron distortions are gonna come from magnets or any magnetized metals near the sensor, um, high current wires and speaker wires. Because you know, if you have a lot of current flowing through a wire, that's going to generate an electromagnetic field which will influence our magnetometer readings. Not so good. Next, we have soft iron distortions and soft iron distortions come from paramagnetic materials. And paramagnetic materials are materials that when you pass a magnetic field through them, they're gonna kinda generate their own magnetic field. And so soft iron distortions are going to deflect and shrink Earth's magnetic field. And soft iron distortions are, uh, is what causes this ellipse to kinda be squished and rotated. And soft iron distortions come from ferrous materials like iron and steel, um, any nickel components, and then also carbon fiber. You know, you wouldn't think carbon fiber is paramagnetic, but it is, and it will 
distort your magnetometer readings. And so I'll quickly go over some other errors that cause um, magnetometer readings to not be good. Um, first, um, our axes or axis misalignment. Um, all of the math when you use uh, magnetometers assumes that each of those flux sensors are perfectly orthogonal to each other or at perfect 90 degree angles to each other. But in reality, they aren't. And you know, these are gonna be that um, non-orthogonality is gonna be caused by um, manufacturing errors. And you know, it's, it's possible to get them all perfectly orthogonal to each other. But in the calibration procedure, I will outline in a little bit, we can correct for this non-orthogonality error. Also, magnetometers exhibit a temperature dependence. That is, the um, calibration parameters are going to be a function of temperature. Temperature compensation is pretty difficult to do in like a bedroom, <laughs> just tinkering around. Um, but good magnetometer sensors are probably going to ship already temperature compensated, so you don't have to do that. But just know that you know hobbyists like you and I probably aren't gonna have to worry about temperature compensating your magnetometer sensors, but just know that temperature, large temperature changes will influence your magnetometer readings. Also, accelerations are going to um, distort your magnetometer readings. So in a very dynamic environment, like a drone, uh, those high accelerations are gonna affect your magnetometer readings. And it's possible to like account for these acceleration errors, but it's really difficult and inv it involves some pretty uh, icky math. So hobbyists like you and I, we don't need to worry about compensating for accelerations. So first off, before calibrating, before calibrating um, your sensor, you're going to want to take some steps in order to mitigate uh, magnetometer errors. And the best and easiest thing to do is to distance your magnetometer sensor away from interference. Um, so that involves keeping, I mean, um, placing your magnetometer sensor far away from magnetic, paramagnetic, and electromagnetic sources. Um, so for drones, you know, you're going to want to keep your magnetometer away from the high current ESC wires, any metal, any sheet metal parts, anything like that and carbon fiber. And so if you look at drones, you might see this little little um, thing sticking up out of it. And that is where the magnetometer is stored to distance it away from all of the electromagnetic and magnetic um, distortions. <laughs> also, that's where the GPS is stored. So let's talk about the calibration model we're going to use. The calibration procedure I'm about to show you is going to compute nine total par calibration parameters. Um, and I'm gonna show you how those calibration parameters are applied to correct your measurements. We're gonna get those by multiplying, I mean, by first subtracting our hard iron correction parameters from our measurement. And then we're going to multiply that result by a symmetric matrix that will account for the soft iron scale factor and misalignment errors. If you're not familiar with matrix and vector math, this might look a little icky, but it's not too bad. Just know that this B part right here is going to account for the hard iron errors, and this A matrix here is going to account for the soft iron scale factor and misalignment corrections. And so, since we have a three by three symmetric matrix and a three by one hard iron correction vector, we're gonna have a total of nine parameters we're gonna to need to find. So how do we determine those nine parameters, those nine calibration parameters? We're gonna do something called ellipsoid fitting. Well, we're not going to, we're gonna have some software do it for us. And this ellipsoid fitting routine is going to determine those nine parameters, those nine calibration parameters to correct measurements to fit on that perfect and ideal sphere. So basically, it's gonna figure out the nine parameters that is that will take this squished and shifted ellipsoid and fit it on top of this perfect circle or sphere. And we're gonna and this is done via optimization. You know, there's like a mathematical model you can use that describes the shape of an ellipse and ugh. Icky math, I don't want to do it. I attempted to write my own calibration code, but I gave up. And I was luckily I found this other piece of software that I'll talk about right now. 
we are going to be using a software called Magneto to calibrate our magnetometer. Um, I will put a link down in the video description where you can download the software. It was made by this person who made sailboatinstruments.com. It's a very awesome piece of software. I'm super happy that it exists um, because it will, it'll calibrate your magnetometer great. It's a great piece of software. It's awesome. <laughs> so this is what it looks like when you open it. So it's asking me to input the norm of magnetic or gravitational field and raw magnetic measurements. So the norm of the magnetic field, that's going to be like the magnetic field strength of wherever you are in the world. So how do we figure out that norm of the magnetic field number? Well, we're gonna, well, we're gonna need a magnetic field model. <laughs> um, so we can use the World Magnetic Model 2020, which you can find on this website. I'll link it down in the description. Um, you input your current latitude, longitude, and elevation above sea level. And this is the latitude and longitude for downtown Chicago. I'm not going to tell you where I live. Uh, the date, and click calculate. Then it'll output this thing right here. And the number we're looking for is that right there. This is the norm of the magnetic field where we are. Now, all of my measurements are going to be in micro tesla. So we need to, so this converted to micro tesla is going to be 53.3. So we'll input 53.3 right there. Now it's asking for us to input a file with all of our raw uh, magnetic measurements. Well, I wrote some code to do that. So this Magneto software assumes that you can output um, raw magnetic field measurements to a tab delimited text file. And so how you generate that text file will depend on your sensor. Um, I am using an Adafruit um, magnetometer sensor right here hooked up to my Arduino. So I wrote some Arduino code to output my magnetometer measurements to the serial port. Um, then I wrote some Python code here to read that serial that serial data and I'll put it to a file. So let's just this quick walk through this code. I'm gonna put all of this code down in I'm gonna put all of this code in a GitHub repo which I will link in the description. So um, we're gonna have to specify our serial port, baud rate, um, how Free, the frequency at which our data is being output and how long we want to take measurements. Give me one second to answer my phone. Hi mom. Bye bye. All right. So yeah, we're going to take a few readings right here just to flush out any bad data. Uh, read the serial data that's uh, separated by commas. Get it into some variables. Print it to the console just to log our progress and store it in an array for later and then write all of our data to a tab delimited text file just like magneto is looking for so let's open up a uh, terminal and run this code so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to generate that ellipsoid thing that i showed you earlier so what we're going to do is we're going to take our sensor and rotate it around a bunch of different uh, at a bunch of different orientations and sort of form a, po a cloud of uh, magnetometer readings and a plot of that will show at the end when my code is done running so let's do this quick okay that probably looked funny <laughs> Um, and this is the plot we end up getting. So this is all of our magnetometer measurements recorded in a 3D sphere. So you see, I can already tell that it's that the center of this uh, ellipsoid right here is not <laughs> at zero, zero. So we definitely need to calibrate this sensor, okay? So I wrote it to this text file right here, and this is what our data looks like. All of our measurements, raw, our raw measurements, um, tab delimited. Then what we're going to do is import this file into Magneto. So we'll click open and calibrate. That easy. 
this is why I love this software so much. I'm so happy this exists. Um, so this is going to be our bias vector right here, that B vector. Uh, that's, that's, that's the symmetric matrix that'll account for scale factor errors, misalignment errors, and soft iron errors. I wrote this other Python code right here to uh, plot the calibrated and plot the uncalibrated and calibrated measurements against each other, just to just to, just to verify our calibration worked and just to see how how significant our um, how, how uncalibrated our sensor was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of these values into my NumPy arrays here and uh, run the code. Okay, so I copied all of these uh, parameters down uh, into my NumPy arrays here. And so what we're going to do is, uh, what this code will do is it's going to uh, plot the uncalibrated versus calibrated data. So let's do that quick. Um, plot calibration data. All right. So the blue ellipse right here are the uncalibrated or raw measurements and the red are the calibrated measurements. So it's hard to see here, but in the um, 2D plots, it's way easier to see. So look at look at how um, uncalibrated <laughs> our sensor was. So the blue data right here are the uncalibrated measurements, and as you can see, the center of the circ of the circle here is way off of zero. Like it's right right here, but as you can see, the calibrated measurements, this circle is centered right at zero zero. Awesome. Same thing with the YZ axis and also with the XY axis, which is probably the most uh, significant. Um, or this is the most uh, uncalibrated, I guess. Um, you can see that the uncalibrated measurements are way off of center, calibrated right on center. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. So there, there, we verified that our calibration worked. <laughs> um, this is probably a lot to take in. Um, I don't blame you, um, but you can see this is, and you know, this sensor right here I'm using is a pretty, it's a pretty good sensor. But as you can see, it's very uncalibrated. And <laughs> these, it's very, very, very important to calibrate your magnetometers before you use them. Otherwise you're gonna get unusable data. I hope, well, hopefully it wasn't too confusing to follow along. And I hope this showed you a good method for a good general method for calibrating magnetometers yeah the development of my drone flight controller is going along well i just finished the circuit schematic and i designed the pcb for it and i'm currently having it printed over in china i'm expecting it to arrive within the next few weeks and i definitely want to make a video showing you guys the flight controller board i developed um so I guess uh, until the next video, see you later.